Jeremiah chapter 13. Thus saith the Lord unto me. And the Lord has some particular things for his prophets. Go and get thee a linen girdle, and put it on thy loins, and put it not in water. Put this girdle on and don't wash it. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and put it on my loins. Doesn't seem hard enough. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, The Lord appears a lot of the second times to Jeremiah. Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise and go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of a rock. Jeremiah is going where Judah is going to go. Judah is going to go as a girdle that is soiled, hasn't been washed, but it's together, just hasn't been washed. Jeremiah is type of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar going to bring them over to the Euphrates. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates as the Lord commanded. You notice how Jeremiah never second against the Lord. Why? What do you want me to do this for? What on earth are you talking about, Lord? Okay, I forgot the girdle. Now you, you want me to go? He does it. He's faithful. And it came to pass after many days that the Lord said to me, Arise, go to the Euphrates, and take that the girdle which take the girdle from thence which I command thee to hide thee. Then I went to the Euphrates. It's at least three hundred to five hundred miles to Babylon. Jeremiah has traveled from twelve thousand to fifteen thousand miles for this girdle. I went to the Euphrates and digged. He had to dig. In the sand, the gunk, the dirt, and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it. And behold, the girdle was marred and profitable for nothing. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. So he's going to bring his people to Babylon, and they're going to be marred. You say, Well, how are they marred? Daniel 1. The king tries to change who they are, gives them non Jewish names, gives them Babylonian names, after Babylonian gods. Then he's going to try to re educate them in the Babylonian ways and not the Jewish way. Then he's going to have them fall down and worship the idol of Babylon, not the God of the Bible. And then it'll be illegal for you to pray to God, and we'll put you in a den of lions. You say, well, how do you mar the pride? Thus, when Nehemiah and Ezra take the land, take the people out of the land, they couldn't even speak Hebrew. And they looked at the children running around. They looked at the wives running around. There's a bunch of Babylonian marrying or married to Jewish people, and they got half breed Jews running around. And isn't it funny how they were mad at the Samarians because they were half breed Jews, but here in Babylon they got half breed Jews. That couldn't even speak the language. How many Jewish people today in America are married to non-Jews? And producing non-pure bred Jewish people. Exactly what's going on. He sent them to Babylon. He's going to mar them like this girdle. This girdle was clean and new. But, you know, it was put on. It wasn't washed. Now it's sent, it's digged in the mud, now it's good for nothing. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, after this man will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. Look who we are. And there are Jews today that I'm going to heaven because I'm Jewish. Really? Without Jesus Christ? Well, he's nobody. He was just a teacher. I follow the law. Uh, where do you go three times a year? Nowhere. 
how do you burn your sacrifice in Mount Zion when the dumb of the rock is there? Well, we don't. How can you be right with God when you can't be right with God? God's made it so you can't be right. He says you're gonna, not going to have a king, you're not going to have an ephod, you're not going to have the priest, and you're not going to have the temple. How are you going to get right by the Old Testament? At least up to David's time, you had the, the, the tabernacle of curtains. Now you've got nothing. This evil people, Judah and Jerusalem, which refused to hear my words, they're not even listening to Jeremiah. Never mind the prophets before him. Which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods and serve them and to worship them. So there's a difference between serving, walking, and worshiping. Worshiping is you go to their place and here I am. Serving is when you go about selling their magazines, cleaning the little dollies, doing something for it. Walking is when you follow the, the leader of that religion. Shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. So you know what God says when you walk after the imagination of your heart and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them? He says you're good for nothing. How's that? That's God speaking. Thus saith the Lord, verse 9. Imagine a loving God saying to you, you're good for nothing. And he's talking to the person, he ain't talking to the gods. There are a lot of people out there good for nothing. And I didn't say it. You can be in religion, walking after that religion, worshiping after that religion, having an imagination of that religion, serving that religion, and be good for nothing. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of man, up against, almost no part of you, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord. I, I have taken you, the Jews, like a girdle to a man. You're not me. That girdle doesn't, and if I put a girdle on right now, that's not me. But boy, it's part of me. Those Jews are not God, but boy, they're part of God what he's saying that they might be unto me for a people and a for a name and for a praise and for a glory that's a that's that's a quite a bit of a call for the almighty God to say to a person God reaching down saying listen you're going to be a people for me of all the people how many nations of people are there I don't know and God says you're the one Everybody wants to hear that. You go to a ball game. We're number one. We're no, not in the eyes of God. You're not. For a name. Judah, Israel, Jews, children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's a name. That's a name that will go off into glory. Eternal. You won't find America. You won't find China. You won't find Ethiopia. You will not find Russia. You will not find Mexico. You will not find England. You will not find Germany. Name all the countries. You will not find them but Israel, the Jews, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in eternal glory. Now there will be nations, but probably new names. There will be Christians, but we're not a nation. We're a group of people unto the Lord Jesus Christ. For a praise. Imagine being a group of people that God is praised about. 
you know, today, this new religious movement, you know, praise, 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 praise. But do you praise God? You, ple you praise the fresh, but is God being praised by you? And for a glory, a glory to God. And God, like Satan, like he says to Satan about Job, you consider my servant Job? As he come down and talked to Abraham as a friend. As Moses went up in the mountain and saw God. As Moses and Elijah appeared before the Lord Jesus. You realize no Old Testament saint ever saw Jesus Christ in the flesh besides Moses and Elijah. There they are. And who were Moses and Elijah? Jewish people. Therefore thus speak thus yeah. Therefore thou shalt speak unto them this word. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Every bottle shall be filled with wine. And they shall say unto thee, Do we not certainly know that every bottle shall be filled with wine? You know? Okay, Jeremiah. Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, Judah, and the priests and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. How many drunks appeared to that verse? <laughs> We're not done. I will dash them one against another. Uh oh, bar fight. Against who? The kings versus the prophets, the prophets versus the kings, the priests versus the prophets, and the prophets versus the priests. The priests against the kings, and the kings against the priests. When they're drunk. Can you imagine what kind of religious and what kind of government authority you got there? Take a look at Washington, D.C. They battle it out up to November, that Tuesday, November. Now, that should be the end of the war. Once you get voted in office, that should be it. But once you get them in office, you know, the Democrats versus the Republicans, Republicans versus the, the Democrats, and the Democrats and Republicans against the president, the president against Republicans. They should not be like that. And on top of all, they're all getting drunk. Once you get elected in, in, into office in Washington, D.C., you ought to put all your difference away and say, okay, now, we're here for the people, by the people, of the people. We're supposed to be looking out for the concerns of the people, not us. That's not so. This is Washington, D.C. We're seeing Jeremiah 13. Mass chaos. Confusion. I will dash them against one another, even the fathers and the sons together. Now you got family. You got a civil war. And that has already happened in America. The blue versus the gray. Civil war. Gen I mean, Jeremiah 13. And the government's at each other, verse 13. And the family is against each other, 14. Saith the Lord, I will not pity. Do you realize what's coming by the time of end of Jeremiah? You're just wondering how much Jeremiah believed God. Says, Lord, I'm, can I put my resignation in? So I, not that I'm quitting. But I don't want to be in this land when it happens. You ever feel like that as a Christian? Say, Lord, can you just call me home? Can't you just put me in some mountain or cave somewhere? I don't want to be part of this. The Lord says, no, I left you here to be a witness. Say, Lord, I don't want to be a witness. Well, you're going to be. And Jeremiah there, well, Lord, I'll quit. Go ahead, try to quit. See how long you quit. And the word was in, in my mouth as burning fire, and I quit. Yeah, I know. We see what's going on, and we've read the Bible, we understand the Bible, we deal with people who profess to know the Bible and couldn't find Exodus without the index. 
And we look at people, their lives are being destroyed, how the government says it's okay to, to be involved in sin, and now it's legalized, marijuana and sodomite marriage. And we look at it like, Lord, can I go home? No. Can I get out of this fight? No. We're in America in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is looking at his own people, his hometown people, the Jews, and saying, I can't believe what's going on. And God has given me a message without a Bible. He's only got the law. Jeremiah has not been written yet. I don't know about Isaiah. He's looking around saying, God is speaking to me, and they're looking at him like, Pfft. He said, they don't say that. Come or go to a, a, a busy place in your city or town and stand in the street of the Bible and preach to them and see what they do to you. They're not going to come up and hug and love and kiss you. You got to learn how to preach and duck. You got to learn how to preach and not fight back. You got to learn how to preach when a guy comes in your face and starts slamming obscenities in your face and telling you things that's impossible to do. You just got to keep on going preaching without getting angry. And you just got to let somebody voice their opinion while you still continue to preach the word of God. This is exactly what Jeremiah is doing. God said, tell the people, verse 12, he's talking to the people. And they're not listening. Nor spare. Nor have mercy. But destroy them. That's the God of love. So when somebody comes up and says, God is love, they haven't read Jeremiah. Because you know what they're thinking? It wishy washy kind of woo, fluffy booty God in your God that's just dripping of, of hot chocolate sauce with whipped cream, little sprinkles on the top with a nice good big fat cherry with whatever ice cream you want. That's their God of love. And a guy with a Bible is, okay, that ice cream's great, but if you leave it out in the sun, you're going to get mush. No, the ice cream lasts forever. No, not if you leave it in the sun. God of the Bible is holy. He cannot allow sin. He needs to judge sin. You need to judge sin in your life. So God doesn't have to judge you. Hear ye, give ear. Be not proud. Oh, speak back to America. What's that song? I'm proud to be American. That song in verse 15, which is right. I bet you there are probably churches out there, Baptist churches, that probably sing that song every once in a while. In their churches, along with... You know, the uh, uh, majesty, beautiful, see whatever's boo boo, and and sing praise to the to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and to the Bible. That's who my allegiance is. I just lost some of you there. Give God, uh, give glory to the Lord your God. You mean not a football team? Not to my company? Before he causes darkness, like he did in Egypt. Like he'll do in the millennium. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountain, walk in the middle of darkness and you just, and you don't even know where you fall. Can you just imagine falling down and not knowing what you're falling down and where you're falling and where you're going? And while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it, it gross darkness as he did in Egypt and as he will do in the tribulation. But, 
if ye will not hear it. My soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and my eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. That's Jeremiah speaking. He loves his people. He's going to be sorry for what they do, but he loves God more. Say unto the king and to the queen. Second Chronicles 36, 9, Second Kings 29, 8, and Jeremiah 22, 26. Humble yourselves. Get rid of your pride. Sit down. For your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. The cities of the south shall be shut up, locked up, closed up. They were walled cities. And none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive. All of it. It shall be wholly carried away captive. So when the news comes in Nehemiah, what's it, what's it look like over there? The place is destroyed. Nehemiah says, I got on my donkey or my ass. I took for a walk. And I got to a point where there was a debris dump field. I couldn't even go further. Not even me or the beast could go any further. There used to be a wall here. There used to be a city here. Jeremiah was right. Lift up your eyes to God. People lift up their eyes to see fireworks. Ooh, oh, look at the airplane. Look at the pretty little clouds. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Look at the star. But they don't look up to God. And behold, them that come from the north. This is looking up to land. Look to the north. Imagine at this time if Nebuchadnezzar is getting his army ready. The orders have been maybe already sent. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? What wilt thou say when he shall punish thee? Oh God, help! What was, what was Peter's words as he began to sing? Help me, Lord! People make fun of OMG. Listen, oh my God, it would be spoken at a time like this. It would be spoken with a time that God is pronounce judgment upon your life and you can't do nothing you better be careful how you use the word oh my god been plenty of accidents oh my god just before maybe just oh god that stupid movie blaspheming god see they think it's a joke they don't fear god omg oh god they think it's laughter But when they're buried and wake up in hell, lifting up their eyes in torment. For thou hast taught them to be captain, and as a chief over thee, shall not sorrow take thee as a woman travail. Notice how the Lord just does the most painful thing ever. He's likened it to Babylon coming and destroying the nation. He likens it to the tribulation period. And if thou shalt say in thy heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thy iniquities are they are thy skirts discovered, and thy heels made bare. No shoes, no skirt, nakedness. Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Michael Jackson tried to. But you can't. Or leper his spots? You know, can a leopard walk in a place and say, hey, I want to be just spotted? No. Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Impossible. You know what God said about man before the flood and after the flood? Imaginations of his heart is wickedness. 
He's prone to do evil all the days of his life. Why? Because he has not the love of God. God is love, okay? But if you don't know who God is, you have not believed God and obeyed his word, you can't say love. You don't know what love is. And you can't say good. Oh, I'm good. According to verse 23, the Bible says there is none good. You don't know what good is. Therefore will I scatter them as stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. Tumbleweeds. Boink, 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 boink. That's the God. That's the God of love. This is thy lot. The portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. There's the false religions. There's the images. There's the idolatry. God says it's falsehood. It's a lie. In every city, every street we've read, therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face. I don't know what upon thy face means. That thy shame may appear. I have seen thy adulteries and thy names. That's, that's what he was talking about, the horses. No, I don't know how the horse do it. You're just an animal. You're a brute beast. Oh, that's what they teach you what you are in schools today. You're just an animal. And you'll just do what an animal does. There are many people out there who go fornicate and adulterate with women left and right and produce all kinds of children. Hey, there's animals out there that the males do produce their own their own species and they go about their business and let mama animal take care of and maybe mama animal, animal doesn't even take care of it. It just leaves in nature. There are some animal species that both the mom and the male the, the male and the female take care of the, the siblings until they're old enough to take care of themselves. Doesn't Job tell us go to the animals? Whoredom. The lewdness of thy whoredom. That's a nice word. Paying for something. Adultery is... It, Listen, adultery and whoredom is the same act. One's with the wrong spouse, and the other one's with something from someone you pay. But it's not your spouse. The marriage bed is honorable. But adulterers and whoremongers, God will judge. That verse is taken out of Jeremiah 13, verse 27. And thy abominations on the hills in the fields. Little groves, little worshiping, little churches, little assemblies, little halls, whatever you want to call your worship center. Maybe a community building. Maybe a public school. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Will thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? When are you going to make yourself clean? When are you going to do it? The day that God gives them a new heart and a new spirit, which is after the tribulation. God has got to change their nature. You know what Adam proved to man? He'll rebel against God. You know what Noah proved to man? You'll rebel against God. You know what Abraham approved, uh, approved of? You know, man will... Man will rebel against God. That's what it's about. 